Hero or Heron of Alexandra, 10 to 70 AD, was from ancient Egypt under the Roman Empire. Hero published a description of a steam power device called an eolopile, hence sometimes called a hero engine. Among his most famous inventions was a wind wheel, constituting the earliest instance of wind harnessing on land. Some of his ideas were derived from the works of Sabaeus. Much of Huron's original writings and designs have been lost, but some of his works were preserved in Arabian manuscripts, mathematics. Huron described a method of iteratively computing the square root. Today, he is the most closely associated with Huron's formula for finding the area of a triangle from its side lengths. The imaginary number, or imaginary unit, is the first observed by Heron while calculating the volume of a pyramidal frustum wheel operating an organ, marking the first instance of wind powering a machine in produced sounds of thunder by mechanically timing dropping of metal balls onto a hidden drum. The first vending machine was also one of his constructions. When a coin was introduced via a slot at the top of the machine, a set amount of holy water was dispensed. This was included in his list of inventions in his book Mechanics and Optics. When the coin was deposited, it fell upon a pan attached to a lever. The lever opened up the valve, which let some water flow out. The pan continued to tilt with the weight of the coin until it fell off, at which point the counterweight would snap the lever back up and turn off the valve. Huron invented mechanical gadgets for the Greek theater, including an entirely mechanical play, almost 10 minutes in length, powered by a binary-like system of ropes, knots, and simple machines operated by a rotating cylindrical cogwheel. Huron described construction of the eolopile, it was a rocket-like reaction engine and the first recorded steam engine. It was created almost two millennia before the Industrial Revolution. Another engine used air from a closed chamber heated by an altar fire to displace water from a sealed vessel. The water was collected and its weight, pulling on a rope, opened temple doors. This is proof that the knowledge of higher principles of physics did exist all those years ago, yet it is most interesting that the knowledge of the metals and tools were not. One would think that the two would be close in their stages of development Another example that we shall peer into is the ancient Chinese fire rockets. A fantastic combination of aero, gunpowder, and wood engineering and physics knowledge was involved in production of these awesome field weapons. The issue is, how did they do it so far ahead of the rest of mankind? Once again, knowledge of higher principles of physics, yet with tools of the day. Our Chinese rockets first appeared in the brutal war between the Song Yin and the Wan states between the 10th 13th centuries. 
types of gunpowder weapons, such as fire guns and flying fire cannons, were commonly deployed. Soon to follow were flying fire cannons. The primitive rocket weapon that was much similar to today's flamethrowers were appearing. At the end of the 12th century, rockets now improved were commonly employed in weaponry. During the Yawn, 1271 to 1368, and the Ying, 1644 to 1911 dynasties, rocket weapons received further development. Many new types of rockets were invented, including Nine Dragon Arrow and A Flockaby Arrow, which were very similar to modern rockets. Significant improvements were made in the science with many rockets propelled by counterforce, produced by ignited gunpowder. The early Ming Dynasty, during a coup led by Zhu Dai, who had led his troops to fight those led by the reigning emperor Yin Wen, and was attacked by a flock of the arrow, which was the earliest record on the application of jet rockets in warfare. Use of weaponage increased after their great success in battle. When General Qi Jingwan fought against Japanese pirates on China's southeast coast, he invented three kinds of rockets. The bodies of these jet rockets were made of hard wood, while metal arrows were composed of a knife, spear, or sword. The rockets could pierce armor. At the bottom of the jet rockets were the power flasks. They were positioned on the wood racks. Soldiers held the rear of the rockets and lit the fuse to fire at the enemies. The device usage was both land and water, also underwater. More than 2,000 rockets were equipped on 10 warships. 4,760 rockets were facilitated amongst the infantry and cavalry troops. Such a great number was unprecedented world military history. It would take the rest of the world 240 years to catch up to a lesser, more basic stage of rocketry. Once again, this is a great example of our theory. Perhaps one of the most beautiful and intriguing places in the world is a remote mountainous region of Peru called Machu Picchu. Its beauty rivaled by its intriguing architecture. It took modern architects 15 years to discover how the ancient architects built it. Perched at 8,000 feet on a narrow ridge in the high Andes, Machu Picchu is a remote and mysterious ancient wonder. Across the top of this ridge are more than 200 structures, each built with fine carved and designed cut stone. Some appear to be living quarters and areas of worship. Fed with open designed waterways and fountains, a one acre green farming field surrounded each level. It is surmised corn was planted there. This helped feed the Incan people by transforming steep slopes into farmland with the rise and run of terracing. Some terraces would have been used for small-scale farming. Their primary purpose was to hold the mountain in place while draining a huge volume of rainwater away. If the structure's drainage and irrigation system was not there, we could conclude that rainwater mudslides would wash away Machu Picchu. The sophisticated drainage system created by the Incas prevented that. Inside the terraces, archaeologists found a layer of rich topsoil. Under that, a layer of sandy dirt, and finally, gravel and larger stones. Perfect water irrigation and filtration. A modern principle learned this past century. Machu Picchu 
was built with stone tools. The Incan Empire lasted for a hundred years, so to build this monument kingdom in such a short period of time is utterly amazing. Stone could be chiseled from nearby quarries and moved efficiently. However, higher principles of physics would be needed. Some fringe investigators claim Machu Picchu was built with the assistance of alien technology. However, the fact is, it is built on not one, but two earthquake fault lines, which makes it a terrible place to build a city of stone. I would think aliens would do a geological site survey. This wonder was built with human stone tools, with knowledge of advanced physics, but not geology. They would use a large tool made of rock that shears rock very easily. Gradually, they would use smaller and harder tools to give that strong, smooth surface. Cutters had roughed it out. Then the rock would be placed on log rollers or mud. Then they would pull it close to the construction site. The final step was to move the stone into place and match it to its mate. The method of building the huge stone terrace was simple. Quarries were nearby, so stone was not an issue. They would split the rock with splinting by stone. Their technique would be to hold up by wedge, shape the two surfaces to match, remove the wedge, and two stones fit together perfectly. They put the beams in place to lift the rock. Once the rock was in place, the brace points were beaten and the rock would fit perfectly. Machu Picchu is a grand example of the theory we have been exploring. Also of note, Nazca Plains and mysterious statues, which are similar to Japan's undersea missing link city, except at the top of the mountains. This could be from the land movement, a continent away that has been forced to new heights in the massive shifting of rock over a long period of time. So the question was, were we here before? The early evidence is beginning to add up, and as we explore the heights of the mountains and the depths of our seas, we appear to be finding new artifacts from the ancient times with greater frequency. As we travel to the depths of our seas, I believe we will find evidence that we were here many times before and we will be again. Thank you for viewing. See you next time for our season finale 2012.